Hi, I'm Justin and today we will be working on a set of double barn doors. These doors were a gift to my girlfriend's mom. She wanted a set of barn doors to cover up another set of doors that don't actually get used. They're in the dining room and uh, they never get used so they wanted something that looked a little bit nicer. So we were building a couple of barn doors for her for Mother's Day. The main structure of the door is made up of a bunch of 1x6s all stacked together. We take the trim boards that go horizontal across the door and use them as the support. We glue them and nail them down to the boards and that holds all the main boards together. We are not putting the board all the way up to the end of the other boards because I like to go back with a circular saw and cut all the edges off and it gives you a really nice clean straight edge for the bottom and top of the door. I like to use these long clamps I have to hold all of the main boards nice and tight while we have time to glue the board down and nail it together. The nails hold the boards together while the glue has time to set. Once the boards have had a little time to dry, I like to go back with the circular saw and cut it flush so that you get a nice clean line on both the top and bottom surface of the door. It's a good idea to sand the top portion of the door now because once the trim pieces are in, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So I was measuring and cutting all the trim pieces while Rachel was sanding down the top side. For the decorative cross pieces in the door, to get the right angle, I just like to lay the 1x4 board across and then draw the line to where it needs to be cut. This is the best way to get the right angle. You can measure a bunch of times if you want, um, but I've just found this is the quickest and easiest way to get the proper fit. Once all of the 1x4 trim was cut down to size, it was time to glue and nail them onto the door. If you're thinking of investing in a battery operated nail gun, I'd definitely say go for it. The investment's well worth it. I was using an air powered one and it would get jammed. You have to wait for the compressor. It is so nice to be able to grab the gun and just go. I will have a link down in the description below of the nail gun that I use in my shop. The only downside of a nail gun is all of the nail holes that come with it. So after you're done putting all the nails in the door, you got to fill them back up. So we used liquid wood and filled all the nail holes and any cracks in the door and then followed that by a thorough sanding.
We sanded the door down to 220 grit, so it was soft on the hands. And after that was done, it was time to stain. We went with Jacobean stain. It is my favorite stain. I know I use it on a lot of projects, but you can use it in different intensities. So the longer you leave the stain on, the darker, and reverse for lighter. For this one, we put the stain on and wiped it off pretty quickly so the doors were still pretty light. For the installation of the barn doors, we were going to go with a header because the studs are not evenly spaced 16 inches apart like the rail needs. So we wanted to make this have a little bit of character. We wanted to distress it a bit, so go ahead and grab whatever tools and old scrap metal and chains you have around in the garage and go to town. I had a lot of fun with this and uh, I think you will too. Might even relieve a little stress built up. The sliding door hardware kit that we purchased comes with a rail guide and for this rail guide you need to cut a quarter inch slot throughout the bottom of the door. That way the door can ride on this plastic piece that's mounted to the floor. This keeps the door from swinging off the back of the wall. Uh, it's a safety precaution but it also helps the door glide in a straight line. For this slot I am using a router but in the past I have used a table saw. And to use a table saw, you have to do it before the door is assembled. So you take the bottom trim piece and run it through the table saw and cut out the notch on the inside portion of the trim piece before you glue it on. And once you glue it on, you have a slot in the middle. That's worked for me before, but if you have a router with a slot cutting bit, go for that too. I used two and a half inch construction screws in the header to attach it to the studs in the wall. Hey, if you're going with me. <laughs> we went with a 10 foot rail. It came in two five foot pieces that needed to be screwed together. I then followed the instructions that came with the kit to mark off how high the rail needed to be installed. We then held up the rail so I could mark where all of the bolts needed to go and pre-drilled so it'd make the bolts easier to install. I used an impact driver to get all the bolts started, but then I followed up with a wrench to hand tighten all the bolts down. Mm -hmm. One and nine sixteenths, that is just over a half. I then followed the installation guide on where the holes needed to go on the door, pre-drilled and inserted the bolts. You want to make sure to install the end caps on the rail so the door doesn't go flying off the edge. And once the doors were up, it was time to install the hardware on the front and it was done. Her mom was super excited about the doors. They turned out awesome and they really did make the dining room pop. <laughs> it's a great addition to the house and I hope you enjoyed the build. And if you like this build and want to see more, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. 
And if you want to help me out, feel free to share this with your friends and family, maybe to someone who's been wanting a barn door in their house. Show them that it's not too hard to build. Uh, just a few tools, you can put it all together yourself. Well, until the next project, <laughs> I'll see you next time.